Namo tasse bhagavato arehato samha sambodhnasse Namo tasse bhagavato arehato samha sambodhnasse Namo tasse bhagavato arehato Samha Sambodhnase. Good evening, everyone. Today we start with a new sutra for our Wednesday Sutra class, which is the Nadi Sota Sutra. Nadi is river, and the Sota is the way of the river, the river current. Nadi Sota Sutra. This sutra brings into light, like the sutras which we know, the Daru Khandu Upama Sutra, uh, the Nadi Sutra, these sutras bring to light upon similes taken with the water, the river. Hmm? So let us come down to reading the sutra first. Hmm? The Nadi Sota Sutra. The discourse on river currents. This was indeed spoken by the Blessed One. Spoken by the Arahat. Thus have I heard. Hmm? Suppose because a man were carried away by a river current. Which appears to be pleasant and enjoyable. Hmm? In this sutra. A man is very confidently, right, in the river and very confidently this man is enjoying himself in the river and enjoying himself being taken by the current. Hmm? So a person who, let us say, is comfortable with this river, uh, with this water and with such enjoyment, this person is being taken by the current, right? Then, a man with vision standing on the bank sees him and says thus. Now, there's another man on the bank of the river. And this onlooker, knowing where the river leads, knowing where the river leads, tells this man who is in the river... My good man, you are being carried away by the river current, which appears to be pleasant and enjoyable, but downstream, there is a wide, deep lake with waves and whirlpools, with predators and monsters. When you reach there, you will meet with death or deadly suffering. Hmm? When you reach there, you will meet with death or deadly suffering. The man in the river, not knowing the way of the river, enjoys himself and takes it as pleasure. But the man who is the onlooker, seeing this man foolishly in the river being taken by the current and at the same time enjoying the river, says to him, my good man, you are being carried away by the river current, which appears to be pleasant and enjoyable. But downstream there is with waves and whirlpools, with predators and monsters. When you reach there, you will meet with death or deadly suffering. Then the man, hearing the other person's words, would exert effort with hands and feet, right? With hands and feet, hands and feet. How many hands and feet do we have? We have four, isn't it? Two hands, two feet. What does this represent? So there are four hands and feet. This is the fourfold exertions. Satara Sammapadana, Chatu Sammapadana, Chatu Sammapadana, the four um, right exertions. What are the four Right exertions, do you remember? 
the four right exertions. Chatu samma padana. Mata kada. Sangwaga. And the second one is uh, it's uh, there is sangwaga, and then the mm. second one is kahana, and then there is bhavana, and I think it's anurakatan. Uh huh. Uh huh. So that is the first two are to do with not, not having any uh, that you don't cultivate any unwholesome things that you don't have. Other one is you reduce what you have. Other yeah. one, yeah, and mean. the next one is to where the wholesome things where you grow what you have, the bhavana, uh, and that what you don't have also that you go that's the anurakatana. So, so the four is divided into, into two, two good yeah. and bad, right. Yeah. Uh, and the four exertions would be where the person is exerting effort, one, to diminish or suppress, eradicate already existent wrong. Hmm? The second one is keeping unarisen evil from arising. Hmm. The effort to keep unarisen evil from arising. The third one, which falls as a good one, is the arousal, the culmination of good, the development of good that is there, and the rising of good that was previously not there. So new guna, new kusan, right? Mm -hmm. So these four, which is everyone, in this present moment, the right exertions, just like this man, fighting with all of his limbs, to fight the pressure of the stream, the current, the person who is here exerts the four right efforts for the cultivation of further good, for the arising of good that was not there, for the suppression of good that is there or the eradication of wrong that is there, I'm sorry, and the non-arising of wrong that was never there. These four exertions with regards to this present moment, right? With regards to this present moment. So do things that facilitate or develop the good. Try to pick up good habits that you have not had before, right? In your dealings, right? In your dealings. The third, or I'm... Um, not sticking to an order, but the third in this case is not fanning the flames of the fires of evil that is already existence within you. And the last one would be then the keeping away from committing evils that have not been committed before. I have never lied, so I shall not continue or I shall not pick up this habit now. I have not done this, hence I will not be picking this up right now. Those four exertions made in that this right in this present moment in our dealing, that is the four right exertions, everyone. Right? Because we tend to think, of course, when we have something like this, the Chatu Sammapadana, the four right efforts, we think about it in a manner where it is to do with 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years of our path of practice where we cultivate it, cultivate it, isn't it? A step by step, step by step. But really, if we come into the present moment, this whole step by step stress is taken away by the person coming into a state of samadhi where within this person's mind right here, right now, this person is making all the right efforts to cultivate new good or rather to pick up new good as things as a part of your life, isn't it? Right. So, for example, let us say, let us say you spend a lot of time on the phone huh? uh, when you get up in the morning, for example, let us say. So the right effort, Sammapadana at that point is, first of all, seeing is this phone usage profitable to me or is it not, right? Because some of you work on your phones, right? Profitable to me or not, right? 
if it is not profitable to you if it is arousing things within you which uh, which you don't want to arouse for example let us say laziness drowsiness huh? uh, doom scrolling and sort of going on and on with it wasting one's time these things in the right effort would be to replace these things with good habits right down to that point where from the mundane to the supra mundane remember the eightfold noble path starts as a mundane uh, and as a uh, samadhi um, increases develops with experience with practice with learning then we learn how to direct this let us say um, to direct this mind towards the mundane to the supra mundane right now coming back to the sutra here hearing then the man hearing the other person's words would exert effort with hands and feet against the stream hmm? against the stream i have used this parable because for the sake of making a point to you this is the point what is the river current right what is the river current carried by a river current what is the river current huh? the river current is craving right the river current is craving even when we take one chitta viti we know now having studied the abhidhamma and gone through the chapters on how these mind processes work we know now that it is not one chitta viti that comes into cognizing one object actually there are, are multiple chitta vitis then run and the more detailed your comprehension of the object is your taking of object is your analyzing of object is your discernment of object is the more details within the object that you go to the more chitta vitis there are right hence within these chitta vitis right there is of course this conditional behavior like all energy isn't it there is this conditional behavior like like if you recall how heat spreads within molecular particles huh? how heat spreads in the same way as these chitta vitis arise these processes of mind arise all of that arising is to do with some sort of interest placed in the object that undercurrent that runs within this sutra referred to as the river current is craving itself craving which causes dukkha satya hmm? craving which causes dukkha satya the river current is a term for craving which appears to be pleasant and enjoyable pleasant and enjoyable that man is being taken by this river current and he is thinking this is pleasurable and enjoyable hmm? because this is a term for the six sense faculties the salayatana the six sense doors huh? where this person thinking this is enjoyable this is enjoyable lets the eyes take you on journeys inquiring 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 but this is not just inquiring is it within these current the undertone of craving is still present hence what does the mind do when the eyes takes you on a journey the further you go upon this journey you it's like trekking or let us say it's like me it's like uh, Uh, what do you call that sport uh, is it mo mountain mountaineering where you climb rocks hmm? uh, rock climbing ah, i think it's rock climbing huh? now see when you climb with those little 
you know, you might have seen videos. Uh, maybe some of you have dared to do it when you were young as well. <laughs> <laughs> right. Now, you know, those videos are so so um, difficult to watch because you watch with such, uh, such uh, nervousness <laughs> because it is so unfamiliar to you. But, you know, just like when you climb those rocks, when you are at one point, there is no coming back. You have to go the way. In the same way, when the salayatan is, oh, this pleasant and enjoyable, you, these sense faculties are taken as pleasant and enjoyable. This is like putting one of those pokes through the rock. You're now there. Right? You're now there because we experience those Whatever that hits the eye or the ear or the nose or the tongue or the body, we experience them because through craving there is a sense of me, myself and I. Meaning, we create a network of webs within these worlds of the eye, the ear, the nose, the tongue, the body, further proliferating the places from which we experience the results of Craving. What is the result of craving? Dukkha. Dukkha such The truth of suffering. Because everywhere that you cling and go on to, what if the rock gives up? It will cause great suffering. In the same way, what happens when these pleasant and enjoyable sense datum, these sense experiences, now is not the same as you first thought it would be. There you have a reason for suffering arising within one's life. We know this because we are living through it currently, isn't it? Right? We live through it. When the sex sense faculties, for example, let us say, when you are younger and let us say when your limbs and joints are so, you know, they're so uh, efficient, <laughs> right? And, you're, and you remember these times and whatnot, then coming on to the later stages, one might experience a challenge or difficulty in connecting with the present. Why is this? For the craving that has arisen towards the six sense faculties of the past. Of the past. When the mind realizes, and really within Buddhist circles, we don't really see an adverse reaction to things like this. But I have seen within, let us say, non-Buddhist circles, when these things are said for some, it is very difficult for them to grasp it so much so they might even lose their temper. Right? Even lose their temper at hearing, let us say, something of that, this sort. Why? Because for them, this is the life. And so entrenched in that sensuous world, right? Which appears here in this sense, just like the man who is completely unaware. Why is he unaware that this may go to some place that ends up killing him? Why is he unaware? Because of this part here. Because he takes Pia Rupa, with great pleasure he is taking this Rupa. With great pleasure he is taking whatever that he is experiencing through the eye, the ear, the nose, the tongue, the body. Hence he has forgotten about the possible danger that could be at the end of this river. At the end of this river. Because the lake down, now the man is saying, the lake downstream. What is the lake downstream? The five lower fetters. What are the five lower fetters, everyone? What are the five lower fetters? Sakai ditti vitikicca silabda paramasa kamaraga and viyapad. And kamaraga and viyapad. E kapo dil himinkiyanna. Sakai ditti. That's a that is self-identity belief, the personality doubt in the in the in the Buddha Dhamma Sangha, which is with the kids and, and clinging to rites and rituals, which is Sila Paramasa. 
Then there is sensual craving and ill will, karma, raga, and vyapada, which in, in the second phase in uh, Trapadagami you reduce, and then when you become anagami, you eradicate those two, including moha, which is a part of those two. Hare, hare. So those ones, everyone, now, now these lower fetters, the downstream, what does these lower fetters, what do they mean? Now, why are they called lower fetters in this case? Hmm? Why are they called lower fetters in this case? Low hanging fruit. <laughs> first aid to saying to Chota Pati Maga, uh, this I and me belief, you know, I, me and my, that's yes. if Sakai did think it's broken. Okay. So they are, they are known as the lower fetters because these are the ones that will be taken away at the first stage of enlightenment taken in Sota Panna stage. That means the Sota Panna stage, isn't it? Now, at this stage, the five lower fetters, there's another reason that they are called the five lower fetters. Because these five lower fetters directly okay. take you into the lower realms. Okay. Right? Into the lower realms. Directly into the lower realms. Hmm? That is why they are called the five lower fetters. Now, these, these lower fetters are done. Why? How are they... Uh, how are they um, committed? Right through what? Through the delusion that occur. The, through the delusion that occurs when taking whatever that arises at the six sense doors as pleasant and enjoyable and getting enraveled, toppled over, topsy turvied through what the six sense faculties. They can gaganamaya. You will be taken away like a ogre, a yoga, a flood, a bond. You will be taken away and it will take you away. This is not a fool's mechanism. This is what we do. How do we then create, for example, let us say, um, for example, let us say, when, um, when, uh, for example, childbirth, right? Childbirth. When the Buddha, right? Rahulo jatam bandhanam jatam. Rahulo jatam bandhanam jatam. Huh? What did the Buddha Bodhisattva say? Rahulo jatam. Rahulo has come to be. Right? Bandhanam jatam. Another bond, a potential for bondage has been created. Right? Potential for bondage has been created, right? And with any of the six sense faculties, the way that we, that self arises at the same time with the taking of tanha is because just like that instrument, the hook that he sort of put into the rock, in the same way, tanha and avijja self is avijja, no ignorance. Uh, hence is tanha and avijja, greed and ignorance, makes these sensuous faculties or these sensuous objects seem real and absolutely like the world that is. When this happens, we create further bonds into that world. Uh, further bonds into that world, right? Now, now, for example, let us say, may the, the sutra about, the sutra about the beautiful dances, hmm? the beautiful dances during the Buddha's time, huh? the beautiful dances. Now, um, although in this world or this time, we don't see that in Sri Lanka, um, I'm not sure whether it might be so still, but I'm sure there are people like this where may traditionally, traditionally, now if you take candy, you have the traditionally these families are the drummers. Huh? No. Traditionally, these families are the drummers. Traditionally, these families are the ones who do these particular things. If you take the doors of the Maliga, uh, the candy uh, tooth relic temple, the doors of that mm -hmm. mother, there is a specific carver who does that. I think they mm -hmm. come from that heritage. 
Especially um, in the same way, uh, in the same way, of course, we have uh, even in the UK, isn't it? We have, for example, Savile Row and all of these traditional family suit makers that have come down from you know those days who take pride in their craft. Now, the Buddha is talking to dancers of these sort and and uh, about this instance where now these dancers the way that they move or the way that they their minds work is to seduce the audience seduce the audience right may mm. um, seduce the audience and as a result of this meaning how do you seduce an audience that is you um, through the mind, first of all, the mind wants to seduce and, you know, sort of entertain the audience, right? Through their bodily sort of moves and beauty and all of these things, right? Now, first of all, Chetana, the volition arises and based upon that volition, Chittaja Rupa, Rupa's created or rising with the energy of the mind because of the energy of the mind, Chetana. Chittaja Rupas are the ones that mold and curve this body to that seduction intention, intention to seduce. This mm -hmm. intention to seduce is to arouse, let us say, karma within other people. Mm -hmm. Right? Karma within other people. Right? May karma within other people. When this is so, now let us say, and when this is so, the people who are, let us say, the dancers, right? Mm. Whose job or duty or life, uh, what do you say? Um, you know, what puts the bread and butter on the table, right? Mm. Bread on the table is the seduction and the arousal of lust in other people's minds. Mm. With this, they say, because of this intention, they say the dancers will, you know, go to the lower realms for that intention of having to seduce, right? Now, may, may, I'm not sure whether all dancers think in the same way, right? I'm not sure about that. And, and uh, having been a dancer myself, may, I don't think I ever thought in that manner. <laughs> <laughs> right some of us are just trying to get through the routine <laughs> yeah. right that is why i mentioned the story of this parampara this lineage yeah. right? which further it um, because that plays a huge part in your commitment to the trade as well right yes. not to say that it is only the people who come through that line but others can also but the bottom line where the volition is taking them to hell is not the fact that they are dancing. It is the chetana of arousing lust within the minds of other people to gravitate to like their dance. Now, you could imagine these traditional dancers of the different apsaras and all of these. These were dancers, these were entertainment items in courts, isn't it? Mm -hmm. uh, in courts and I'm sure they would take the most beautiful girls and ladies of the time to dance and entertain the lords and ministers of the courts so mm -hmm. these people's duties or you know their craft is lustful right it's a very different setup it would be a very big because we cannot say we had to come down to the Chetana Right, the chetana under there, which takes him now. See, by lineage, they are dancers, right? Mm -hmm. And they continue along that and they become that. Why? Because of this stream of craving, right? Mm -hmm. Putting them into their kammas are through craving, kammas are made through those craving, right? Then, as a result, they fall into this. And now they have to dance and sort of make it their life, right? Um, and especially at the time, uh, these were ladies, these were females. So they wouldn't have 
had a big sort of decision or a uh, question in the matter as well, right? I mean, their families would have pushed them right there. Now, what happens there? Because of that, now you have to get used to it. Now, now you have to live the lifestyle. So what happens? Yeah, that is how the pleasant and the enjoyable, how the sense, sixth sense faculties hold on to or create a network of individuality, self, within the different points of that person's life. Now, so much so that this person gets trapped there. Now the person sees no other life beyond this position, right? No other life beyond this position. We see this so much people feeling trapped. Huh? People feeling trapped. We see this so much in the world right now. When you feel trapped in that, in that sort of stream, right? What is often what we go into? We go into poor pleasures, hmm? poor pleasures, right? Not the great pleasures, poor pleasures. What are the poor pleasures? May uh, you try to sort of, you know, may emotionally satisfy yourself with food or something that you put in, you know, or something that you would see or something that you would hear, music, songs, you know, all of that to take the stress away or whatnot, isn't it? To relax, you would watch a movie or something of that sort again, or go somewhere, vacation, right? Now see, without inherently looking at the stream of craving, what we would look at is to cover a burden that has been created through the six sense faculties, through what? Through karma chanda, for example, the desire for sensuous pleasures, right? Again and again, again, karma raga. Uh, the lusting for that sensuous experience, a lusting for it, thinking, going behind it, because that's kind of the only pleasure that you have, let us say, right? The only pleasure that you have. Or, you know, then when you feel so lost and trapped in this network or world that at one point might be sort of it might be growing or whatnot, but you might also, even if it is successful, how many successful people are out there who feel completely alone and isolated and like they hate what they're doing, right? And they have no use of even what they earn because their minds are not there, right? How many people are there? The five lower fetters are a representation of those hallmarks that people go to. For example, Silabhita Paramasa. Silabhita Paramasa is where we depend on rites and rituals, right? In order to bring about our salvation. For example, rites and rituals. Let us say, uh, for the people who believe in... Uh, let us say, if I pray, you know, once every every Sunday, if I go to church, or every Sunday I go to the temple, or you know, what not, you know, all my all my sort of um, sins will be forgiven. Right, mm -hmm. sins will be forgiven. Now these are these fall down to those rites and rituals through that we are expecting our salvation. Through mm -hmm. that, we are expecting our salvation. For example, in Sri Lankan households, we have the Kiri Uttarima, the boiling mm -hmm. of milk, right? On the festive days. Now, if this milk, if the pot sort of overturns or breaks or if something happens, you would take this as a bad omen. Mm -hmm. You would take it as a bad omen. Hence, corrupting one's mind and now tainting one's mind to what could possibly happen disregarding the power of present moment action disregarding the power of present moment action those are all incorporated within these five lower fetters why these are the ways that mundane people seek solace and release often leading to the hellish realms uh, leading to the hellish realms why because that path leads just as the sutra says, downstream, huh? downstream, right? Now, um, downstream, 
and uh, even for example let us say astrology right where 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 you would not do a specific thing right may if let us say it is coming through right a deep belief and um, deep belief of these things i think there have been stories where mothers who sort of received a time to concern uh, to let us say to give birth at a specific time right may at a specific time they have tried to hold it in right hold the baby in, right and and sadly uh, leading to fatalities of the mother and the child right now see occasions like that right where sila but the paramasa the the negative results of that sila but the paramasa can be seen um so much right here the buddha does not say that these all of these things are wrong the buddha says depending on them for your salvation is wrong your salvation will never come from them right now what is the danger of waves danger of waves is this umi bhaya umi bhaya huh? umi bhaya is when it comes to anger and annoyance that could arise within the heart of this person towards let us say the six sense faculties owing to the five low fetters that arise then with whirlpools remember they said there are whirlpools yeah. this is these whirlpools are a term for bonds the five cords of sensuous pleasure when you get caught to one of these right when you get caught to one of these you will be dragged down with it the cords of sense pleasure the cords of sense pleasure right and where and you would know so many stories of maybe yourself or another person at some point in their lives where you would see usually you would see these things happening where with all good sense aside right where you find a person completely enamored with a certain thing right being pulled deeper and deeper and deeper into this state right into this object those are the five cords of sense pleasure what are the five cords of sense pleasure ah huh? the chakku the eye the ear the nose the tongue the body taste and tactile or tab object right so va rupa visual datum eye ear which is sound the ear as you know is inclusion of the sound the vocal cords as well so that also is a ear base right taste smell and tactile object now the other part with predators and monsters now this is a term for whoever that one finds oneself attracted to right mm -hmm. that object of attraction is a great hindrance for a practitioner right for a practitioner now, this is taught to monks when it comes to let us say lay people right when it comes to lay people one must always know regardless of whether who this being is the more that you go into a certain pleasure demise starts right we know this very well with all the diabetic patients right the stubborn diabetic patients who you know eat everything without being at all careful right and then and then 
and then of course having diabetes and having sort of you know all of these um, pills and insulin and all of these things then eka thama aragana thama kana right thama kana still cannot let go of the taste right still cannot let go of the taste me even even if you don't have diabetes <laughs> even if you don't have diabetes <laughs> me because you like to eat i know so many doctors in sri lanka <laughs> because they like to eat they they might be young <laughs> but they take a metformin although they don't have diabetes and just eat so mm. so this is and we see not only with food right we see it with for example kids and their music for example they do not want to take those earphones off they do not want to off the whatever that it is that they're listening to it's literally playing all the time right and they need that stimulation in as sound as well and their mood changes and depends on sometimes the sounds that they hear it can go into the what is all of that the five codes of sense pleasure right which arises at the six sense faculties right at the five sense doors five sense faculties put together by the mind door hence the five codes of sensual pleasure are like whirlpools which pulls you in which pulls you in there you would have predators and monsters this would be any person that you are attracted to not just in this case remember the buddha is speaking to the sangha at that moment here any person that you are attracted to that would fall under that would fall under this monsters and predators mm. monsters and predators which causes such a ruckus in one's life and also affects other people around you right but in this in this case with this sutra this buddha in speaking to the monks is clear you can't do this with this me with this um, raga element in your life it can't be done mm -hmm. right for for example for a for a monk to live in a monastery right and to be able to go on that you can't do it mm -hmm. it's literally impossible to do why because when one goes into that world of lust there is no stopping you become a complete or a me ambale yoga ge kiyala kenne neda ha completely become having tasted it eka attara ganna you can't let go of that right so these are also other people no right whether it is a man or a woman these are other people hence now there is uh, because these other people can also make let us say suggestions and um body verbal mental sort of actions can come out of these people external stimuli this person right practice will completely come into a stand still when the mind shifts from let us say the spiritual happiness to the karma happiness yeah. right to the calm of happiness right the other part against the stream now now are kinavani kahul with the two arms and the two legs gaga gaga trying to get away from the downstream the four right efforts right now swimming against the stream now while's making the four right efforts this person is trying to swim up the stream what is this renunciation 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 what are you renouncing you are renouncing what appears to be pleasant and enjoyable you are renouncing you are renouncing what have what 
but seems to be pleasant and enjoyable. You are renouncing the potential of enjoyment. You are renouncing that whole Dhamma and you're trying to come away from it, come away from it, come away from it. That is swimming Patisotha. Patisotha Gami. It is swimming against a stream. That is when the others might seem to cling, you do the opposite. Mm. Right. Swimming against effort with hands and feet. Uh, efforts with hatehi padehi vayamu. This is the four. The term for the application of energy that is the four. Sammapadanas. A man with vision, Chakuma Puriso Tire Tito. May a man with vision, right? The man with vision standing on the shore is the person who is a Tathagata. The Tathagata show, shows the path and points at the danger ahead. Right? The danger ahead. Hence, the man standing on the shore is the Tathagata. Right? Now, let us read this again. Carried by the river current, carried by the um, carried by the river current, which is the craving. Suppose because a man were carried away by a river current, which appears to be pleasant and enjoyable. That is, this man taken away by craving, sees pleasure and enjoyment within the six sense basis. Then a man with vision standing on the bank sees him and says, the Tathagata, right? Seeing the danger that this man is about to experience, sees him and says, my good man, you are being carried away, right? You are being carried away. This object has taken over you. By the river current, by craving, you are being carried away by craving which appears to be pleasant. You are being fooled. It appears, it only appears to be pleasant. But downstream, uh, downstream the fetters, the law of fetters, there is, right? When you reach downstream, the law of fetters, there will be waves, hatred, crawl, vaira, uh, all the hatred rooted chittas arising because now when you go into the downstream you are struggling to live you're struggling to survive you're um you're you're trying to establish yourself as much as you possibly can so there will be anger there will be frustration there will be all of these things and whirlpools Whirlpools are things. These whirlpools are, may, however they might seem quite interesting, they suck you in, right? These are the five codes of sensuous pleasure, right? With predators and monsters, with predators and monsters, these are people. This is actually to do with may, predators and monsters. Um, predators would be any type of may karma related interaction. Monsters would be the persons that one is attracted to, right? Whether this be uh, persons one is attracted to, right? These predators and monsters, when you reach there, you will meet with death or suffering. Now, when you go down that road, you will only meet with death and deadly suffering, meaning death. How? What kind of death? You will go through that whole thing and then you will die. And then there will be rebirth and again that whole stream yet again. Right? Yet again. When you reach there, you will meet with death or deadly suffering. Deadly suffering is hell. Right? This deadly suffering that you would experience... Uh, on earth as <laughs> the hell can be experienced right in this world itself right 
and deadly suffering. Then the man hearing the other person's word would exert right efforts with his hands and feet against the stream, hands and feet to do what? Renounce, renounce, right? Renounce. I have used this parable because for the sake of making you, um, making a point to you. And this is the point, right? So that is a sutra, everyone, right? That is a sutra, which is, which is now getting trapped within the pleasant and the enjoyable in knowing that this is the undercurrent of craving. When we know that craving can arise, you must first understand as this sutra says and many other sutras say, craving can arise at any time. Right? It is not a question of um, it is not a question of whether or not it arises. It will arise up until you're enlightened that craving is there, right? A final liberation up until arhat, that craving is there. Knowing that fully well, when we experience pleasant and enjoyable and unpleasant and displeasurable objects, we try, attempt our level best to see this through the Dhamma as an experience that is occurring at the six sense faculties, right? Six sense faculties. Now someone is coming and telling you, let us, you know, let's invest in this, 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 this pot, right? Let's put it into this I, yeah, Isa or Let's put it into this uh, fund or, you know, whatnot. You know, some, your accountant or someone is telling you this. And within the next, um, within the year, this is the amount of returns you will get. Hmm? This is the amount of returns hmm. you will get. Now in your mind, you're, you know, you're seeing this as a very positive return, right? You're imagining yourself, what would I do with this money? Right, this return, should I put it back? Right, should I put it back or, you know, what's not? Or we create a world with that money. What shall I do? Shall I get a new car? Should I put another sort of deposit in for another house? Mm -hmm. Now see, of course, of course, there will come, you know, you might say, you know, those are the things that we have to do. You know, yes, of course. However, you can... Whilst you're doing it, you must also be aware that these are the six sense faculties. At the end, just like any insurance person or someone who's trying to sell you something, or you know, the salesman, the salesman will convince you and tell you why you need this in your life. And in your mind, you will create the imagination of, yes, I do need this in my mind, in my life. That is done by the six sense faculties. Knowing very well what the Dhamma is or what this path is about, we do not, let us say, take pleasure or whilst we, in, whilst we are with the six sense faculties, we are, not dis, we are not taken for a ride or made a fool on account of whatever arises within the six sense faculties. Right, rises within the sixth sense faculties because we know these are at the end impingements within the sixth sense faculties. These impingements you watch, isn't it? Sixth sense faculties, Vedana Nupasana, you watch this. When you are doing your other bhavanas, you are watching the rising and the seizing of whatever objects impinge upon the faculties. Right. During the faculties, meditation, Indriya Bhavana, we would focus on these things. Whatever object that arises, that object, there is some sort of nuance craving everyone. You must, you must try to see that. That there is always a certain sense of craving. When that craving goes away, you go into this place called Tadanga Nirodha. 
<laughs> right where yeah, everything disappears for a moment the body disappears the mind disappears for a moment that is when for a short period of time you go into a place where you don't have any craving right for a very short period of time but it again arises right it, it again arises it's like for example if you close a dam when it's uh, raining right then the dam could do easily overflow isn't it right mm -hmm. easily overflow right now hence what happens is you can close it for a little bit of a time but then it can easily overflow right now in these places you observe the six sense faculties you realize you know whatever that is happening let us say whatever high or low that you are experiencing you don't take it to heart that much your your kind of balanced you are riding it through right you know that uh, this is not the be all and the end all right because why you have a higher goal nibbana let us say or let us say your goal is far peace right for a person who let us say enjoys a fight he might sort of see loss in just having peace he might want a fight right these are all down to the way that you see and interact with the sense faculties right so i can't sit here and tell you exactly what to do i can't because it is so different from one another but what we can deduce by this as a practice and the buddha has put it so beautifully which is the fact that realizing that within us we have this element of craving because we have this element of craving anything that arises to the eye the body the speed, uh, eye eyes ears nose body um, and the mind these things when the objects arise we must be careful not to take everything as me myself and i right me myself and i when we go into those let us say strange patterns of thought due to those higher bonds that arises because of the lower fetters right because of the lower fetters now we will start building kama raga silabata paramasa vichikicha mm -hmm. we start building this sort of um, let us say a world of hindrances through these fetters and this world of fetters only takes you down right only takes you down actually you can see this very well now being a buddhist monk and having spent a bit of time in sri lanka i'm sure all of you have far more experience i have never come across a person who indulges in occult sciences and is happy i have never i have met so many people who are in sort of you know in sri lanka they are everywhere no right everyone is doing some sort of occult science right but when you take these people and if you look at them they are not happy people right now occult sciences things like that is very heavy silabata paramasa right very heavy silabata paramasa thinking that this is going to bring me peace Uh, even those very evil things they would do you know they are never happy i don't know maybe you know people who are happy i don't right i don't there is some sort of suffering in the deep suffering in their lives but that suffering is also very different from the suffering of a person may, who doesn't engage in that world right these things when we see the five lower fetters these are like nikang it's like spider webs cobwebs it builds on builds on builds on right weaving 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 up until you know when the cobwebs are so densely woven you can't see you no know, you can't see past them right when they are so deeply woven you can't see past them in that sort of manner the five low fetters blinds this person blinds this person when they are in such a situation the craving 
all these objects will become more and more. Hence the meditator observes and practices what? Letting go. Now these are all to do with those hindrances that can come. What do you do? Mohotak, mohotak, pasa, moment to moment. Realizing or coming to realize the end goal, right? What do we do? Renounce, renounce, renounce. That moment, if that anger is there, renounce. That moment when, let us say, uh, deep craving is present, renounce. Right, renounce in so many different ways, right? And we find this, although you know these. I think these are quite, quite, um, quite uh, applicable because in our world today, you know, it is very easy to see two people fighting over one article of clothing or something shortage in the sort of uh, supermarket. During COVID time, remember how people were fighting against toilet paper. Huh? When it comes to, you know, levels or states of that that side in Sri Lanka, even you would find in India these places, right? Uh, remember when when uh, there was a lady who had gone up to me, the Buddha's the Buddha's place of. Uh, um, was it enlightenment? Hmm? And then she had given a piece of soap to one of the uh, local children who were there. And very soon, the whole village had come you know, to sort of take stuff or, you know, she was distributing stuff. And they even took her clothes off. They even took her clothes off and ran away with it. Right? It was all over the newspapers. <laughs> and noise, <laughs> right? May this is uh, where do you call this? Everyone near near Bud Gaya. May I forget the word? May Matagada, the the mountain that you had to climb, the little mountain, the hill. May this is near Bod Gaya, the place of enlightenment. I think this is where the Dusra Kriya happened. May do you remember the name of that place? Dusra Kriya. I can't remember. It is, uh, I can't remember the name of the word. Mahameru Parvati. Mahameru Parvati. Mahameru Parvati. Mahameru Parvati. Mahameru Parvata is is Parvata is a hill climb. No, 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 no. I mean, this is a real place that was that is you can go to and visit. I can't remember the term. I mean, Someone say is it, uh, that it's it's close by. I have been and the feeling inside. But now when I try to think of what the name is, where that cave is, because we have to go a little away from both guys. Yes, 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 yes. And on the pilgrimage, they take you there. And yeah. even before you go, you can feel the vibrations. Of yes, yes. So that yeah. village, you see where the buses yeah. stop. There's a small village there, right? Yeah. So in this place specifically, they tell you not to give anything, right? But, but you see, the place that they those people have been put into, Right, and dire need, dire need, because of that need, what has happened to these people? Right, at that moment, may their complete sense, right, their complete sense goes away. Complete sense goes away. These are we don't see these things in. May in those ways, if you don't go to places like that, because we don't have that amount of poverty in these. Bante, excuse yes. me, is it Gijakuta Parvata? Gijakuta Parvata. Gijakuta Parvata Nemi. Nemi. Gijakuta Nemi. It's called Durgeshwari. Ah, Durgeshwari. Durgeshwari. That's right. Ah. Durgeshwari. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. Dukesh, it is first time I heard. Dukesh. Uh, yeah, which is near Bodh Gaya. Uh, <laughs> me, um, so, me, they fall into such depths of poverty where those low fetters, it is poor in nature. It is poor in, when it is poor in nature, the fetters that arise, right, because of that need, because of the condition that is present, coma is survival of the fetters, those kinds of attitudes, mm. right? Those kinds of attitudes that come up and complete lack of evilavata. I mean, these kids sometimes, I have being in Buddha Gaya for a little bit, I have seen, you know, children, they can be completely sweet and so lovely and kind and, you know, all of that. But then another moment when they see a person handing stuff out or something of the sort, they will become extremely violent, right? To get it, to get it. So much so, me, I think even <laughs> there was another occasion where a monk had gone and distributed a bit. <laughs> they have even removed the monk's robes. <laughs> it's so funny, right? Me, but this is the way that we create those networks in. And what the Buddha says is, through condition, when a person is able to observe this, see this rising and seizing, rising and seizing, ethana, api idadindina, we don't allow for it to go into a level of, let us say, me, a tr um, clinging or further upadhana, huh? further upadhana, and where we hold on to it and where we want to keep it is mind over the thoughts. We take precautions to let go of such thoughts as much as one possibly can through the four sammapadana, the four right efforts. Right? The four right efforts. Because is a term for renunciation. Now, when it comes to this path, if you're talking about, let us say, spiritual power, this spiritual power lies upon the more that you, let us say, can let go of, or the more that you can feel disconnected from, let us say, the pleasures, there you will have spiritual power. Why? Because this mind is not, uh, let us say, it doesn't wave according to pleasure and pain experience to the sixth sense basis. Right? Through the sixth sense basis, that power, how that comes about is this person's interest is not the five courts of sense pleasure. This person's interest is not the five codes of sense pleasure. Now, for example, let us say wow. the monk who is consuming the food, really, when you meditate and, you know, when you're in that may state of mind, eating food is also mahakardaryak. Right? Because after you eat food, you have to, you feel a bit sluggish or you have to, you know, may go on a walk or you have to get this heaviness out of your stomach may it just brings it's such a <laughs> it's so heavy on the mind it's so heavy on the body right and when you meditate and when you're there eating itself becomes a sort of like a burden where you are only doing this now it is such a beautiful experience that we all experience at the retreat this time um, I think <laughs> I'm speaking for everyone, but I think so. May some of them are here. May I know for myself, eating at that point becomes such a waste of time and such a waste of, let us say, your day. Because I mean, what eating? I'm in so much, I'm eating far better things in my meditation. So, 
what is this all about <laughs> uh, what is all this? that is everyone that happens to anyone who meditates and sees the impermanence of these five folds of sense pleasure or take in the faculties route the six sense the salayatanas uh, salayatanas this is where the object arises this is the object Right? The codes of sense pleasure, how we create the bond. When that shift occurs, these things, it is, it becomes quite easy to go against a stream. Why? You don't have a need to break it. Right? Because you want to keep it going, keep it going, keep it going. But after every retreat, right? That retreat, of course, it plays a very good part in strengthening our faculties and you know all of this minds and all of that but after the retreat when you come back home you realize also even driving back you realize oh gosh you can see how much of stimulation right which is that in the beginning it's so weird um seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, or road rage, or in any of the, all of these things, you realize how how complex, I think, uh, how complex all of these different objects that arise are, right? That arise are because they're arising every moment, so many reactions, so many reactions in the retreat, everything is slow. But when you go out, everything is fast, 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 right? Fast. That itself is why the meditator spends time in seated and walking meditation, contemplating the arising and ceasing, arising and ceasing of, let us say, the five aggregates of clinging. Hmm? The five aggregates of clinging. By what? by the application of energy in the present moment. In the present moment, the reaction that we have to that object, right? How we tackle that object, right? How we tackle that object. Now, let us say, let us say, me, me, amma, I mean, someone's a mother is feeding the child right? Feeding the child. Now, when attachment and love increases or, you know, whatnot, the mother might say, may you be my child for every other birth to come. Right? <laughs> right, every birth to come. Now, may you be my child. The fact that you think that this is a child is first avijja. If we take our real age, isn't it? How old might we be? <laughs> <laughs> like vampires. <laughs> like vampires living for centuries. But we are even more. If we take the age of this mind, right? The Buddha would say this is... Uh, this... <laughs> <laughs> right such 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 long long time such long long time so the taking of the fact that this is that there is something called a sun is avijja ai avijja wenne etana ara yatharthi vahalane yatharthi vahala thamai metana puta kiyala kiyanne now you might be experiencing that when you are showing affection to your children or grandchildren you might be Thinking, Mike, <laughs> I wonder whether it, it uh, comes into your mind, you know, when, you, when you're sort of embracing them or whatnot. And you think, you know, this is only, you know, this is only five khanda. This is another being. There is no mm. sense of me here, right? And uh, this is, there is no sense of me here. Right. And you might even look at your offspring now when they're all grown up and they're doing their own things and whatnot. You might see them and you might also wonder who made them. How <laughs> 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 
<laughs> right? You might be wondering, where did they actually come from? <laughs> because sometimes their behaviors, their behaviors is so unlike you, or sometimes their behaviors are is so much like you. But regardless, that is the way the sense faculties work. Those are the five codes of sense pleasure, right? The five codes of sense pleasure. And when those ideations come to mind, we learn to let go of them. Renounce it, renounce it. Just like remembering this man, <clears throat> this man in the river, me enjoy karakarayani. He's enjoying himself while being dragged by the current. If not for the man on the shore saying, hey, look, downstream, it's coming, you're going to fall. This man wouldn't have known. Hmm? This man wouldn't have known. We know there are still some people who would say, Ani, you go to hell, I will do what I want and still be in the river. <laughs> right? Still be in the river. Such is the codes of sense special. Why? Why would even mind your own business, I'll do what I want, come up? Attachment to the six sense faculties. Attachment to the six sense faculties. So whilst we might at some point also experience ourselves being dragging along this current, this craving, we bring our mind to a sense of alertness distancing ourselves and observing this object as it is, at the faculties, arising and ceasing, and we work on letting it go. How do we let it go? Through the four exertions. What time? Present moment. Present moment. The right exertions in the present moment. What, in what way can I practice right effort? Just don't repeat bad that you've done before. If you've spoken, let us say, to a person in a certain way and then you've realized this didn't go according to plan or something, then you don't do it again. Hmm? Now, if you have never spoken, let us say you've never uh, used certain words to scold, then don't use those words. Ne? Unarisen, unwholesome, you don't let it arise. Right? Now, now it, you're not saying it, but you're not even thinking it. You're not even entertaining that thought. Hmm? Now, um, with good, being trying to have more kusala, more understanding, more compassion when it comes to that moment where you understand the situation, however, you're not getting emotionally involved. Right? Some people, they also have the thing of, okay, they have, they are asking the right questions, but the more that they hear answers to those questions, they get riled up. Right? <laughs> Here, the balance comes where you're asking the right questions, let us say, but you're not getting riled up. So now, your good has increased. You're asking the right questions, but before you got riled up. Right? So asking the question is also good, no? Uh, being considerate enough to ask the question. <laughs> right? Right questions. But you ask the right questions here now with better intention or with efforts not to get riled up but with equanimity. Whatever the answer is, this person is opening up to me or telling me the truth. I must, you know, try to support. Um, doing of making sure present good has increased. So present good has increased and unarisen good, cultivating unarisen good, picking up habits or picking up good kusala, ways of mind, and bringing it to the mind within this present. So any of these four can work. You can't apply all four at once. But as you apply and apply and apply, these four will get polished so much so that when it comes to that right moment, it will arise. That specific right moment, it will arise. That specific right moment, it will arise. Mm -hmm. Automatically. Because it is part of this training that is working in your mind. Right? Now, <clears throat> this is the meaning of what the Blessed One said 
one wishing for future security from the yoke, right? Future security from the yoke, that is future security from the yoke should give up sensual pleasure even if it is painful, right? Must give up sensual pleasure even if it is painful. The one seeing rightly with the mind liberated should touch liberation in due time. The knowledge master, Tathagata, whose holy life is lived, has reached the words in Arahata. He is called the one who has crossed over. This matter, meaning truth, was spoken by the Buddha. Thus, have I heard, it continues on from the next sutra. Right. So, what does this say? One wishing for security from the yoke. What is the yoke? Yeah, right. Here, the yoke is what? Security from the yoke. Here, security from kami, sensual pleasures should give up sensual pleasure even if it is painful. Right? Should give up sensual pleasure even if it is painful. Here, this is of course for the monks and their training where, you know, we are expected the sensual pleasure, keeping of sensual pleasure within that atmosphere. Me keeping things is not the main is not sort of, let us say, they will not say anything, right? They will not say anything. But um, when you get rid of stuff, there is a sense of cheer and happiness, or a sadhu kar dimak, uh, giving of sadhu, 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 right? When you're having that sense of letting go, which then persuades all these monks, then let go, let go, let go. And even when they, I have told you so many stories about our samosas and, you know, little, little things, right? So you can imagine, you know, may, uh, when you get something, you know, sometimes really you get it, right? Sometimes you, you would get it really. But when you get it, even really, when you do get it, the thought that comes to mind, the first thought is, of course, you're happy about it, Right? And the second thought is, who can I give this to? Right? Which I think is so beautiful in the Sangha. And I remember even when I used to go Pindapatha in Sri Lanka and we used to get, you know, may the moment may it falls, of course, we are doing the metta as the people serve and all of that in the village. But the moment, you know, I know it's there. I would sort of think about, let us say, Mahathera huh? right, in the dining hall, the uh, head monks, and you know, go, go and give it to them because before we start eating, there is this, uh, before we start eating, there is this sharing of food that happens. Where you sarani, uh, the sarani vata is where you put a bit of food from your patri into the monks, other monks patri, the monks will put a bit of food it's like an exchange. So you exchange. So if there are 50 monks, you exchange food with 50 monks. Right? So we kind of, the Mahathera stand, we go to them and then one after the other, they stand in a line as they serve and, you know, come. So then all 50 monks would exchange with one another. It is quite special. It is a sense of sharing done between the monks at that time. May, at that time, may this giving up of these things which bring pleasure within that atmosphere is seen as something which is celebrated. Right? Something which is celebrated. And the Mahathera is when the young ones bring, they will also never say no. They will also never say no. Why? Because that is how the young ones would also sort of, you know, in their giving opportunity for them 
to do that kusala and take care of the mahateras because in these monasteries we would be have ample right would have ample the second part is one the one seen rightly with mind well liberated when the mind is liberated sammapta jano suvimutta chitto suvimutta chitto is suvimutta it's not just liberated well liberated suvimutta chitto a well liberated mind one sammapta jano uh, one sees rightly should touch liberation vimuttiya passaya tatta 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 vimuttiya passaya in due time langa 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 hmm? vimuttiya passaya they will touch the liberation passaya is contact vimuttiya is liberation they will come into touch with liberation tatta tatta in due time saveda knowledge here brahma charyo sa sa ved gu guvi guvusita guvusita here brahma charyo one who has mass sa ved gu vusita that is who is a vrusha very much excelled in the mastery of what brahmacharya right who has mastered this lokanta gu para gato ti vucha vuchati that person goes to the end of reaches the world's end that is nibbana that is nibbana so so everyone do we have any questions vante can i ask one question yes. Yes. And I, I couldn't quite understand how normally when we do the chittas and try to seek out, you know, you either have pleasure or pain or equanimity broadly if it is three or it can be five. You know. So how can you give up sensual pleasure even if it is painful? Sensual pleasure is pleasure and hmm. you, can, you, you can have pain, painful things. You know, there are people who self-harm. You know, that is painful. Hmm. So you must give up pleasure and you must give up self-harming, which is painful. But sensual pleasure is opposite of painful. I, I, I understand what they are trying to say. That I think what they are trying to say, I don't know I'm wrong with that, that with this sensual pleasure you must give up because that's a yoke you're carrying. And even if it is some people enjoy painful experience, you know, they, they cut their bodies and they do all kinds of harming things. So, or drinking too much so all those i suppose that's what they mean Even so here here this sutra is one taught to the monks yes here kami refers to any sort of sensual gratification yes. right any sort of sensual gratification any yes. yes right any so that would mean when it comes to food shelter clothing and medicine these yes. things would be taken uh, or consumed for the lengthening or the uh, maintaining of life to benefit the path yeah. right yeah. to benefit the path komat how when a person falls into the dhamma slowly we know slowly but surely they will mm. lose interest in the sensual pleasure right here the dhamma in the sense here is the is a meditation bhavana maya jnana isn't it right mm. so here the word kami did here the word koyok is translated comes from the pali word kami right in the sensual pleasures kami right kami yoga kema i think right here yoga kema i think yoga kema is me hondata dairavantava right ayatin ayatin kiyala kiyanne me with with great uh, with great effort made with great resolve one should yoga kema ayatin patayanu here one should give up the sensual pleasures with i think with great effort 
one should work this mean this means give up sensual pleasures is the dependence on it no mm -hmm. yeah. and the dependence upon it the more that you're dependent upon it right the more that you're dependent upon it the mm -hmm. more that you will have those situation dependent upon it but when the mind is not dependent upon it, it's a different situation. Right? Here, how do I not become dependent or beholden, let us say, to the changing world, for example? Huh? To the changing world. And, and how does one become non-dependent of it? The Buddha advises when, before we consume, the requisites to do the Pachavekkana, the recollections, and reflect upon the usage of this Pachavekkana. Right? Upon the usage of this Pachavekkana. When that is done, the person is able to sort of reduce that string of attachment and upadana that could arise following it further beyond. Huh? So, okay. here this, this refers to Kame Vishaka, do you want to ask something? Yeah, uh, I just wanted to get clarification. This is how I understood, like, based on also what you just uh, explained. So let's say when uh, monk or we even, when we eat something or hear something, we have pleasures, pleasurable sensations. Instead of going with that pleasure, uh, but instead uh, look at it like the, this food is to... Um, keep the life going to practice and that is giving uh, even though uh, we want to go you know like uh, with the current to enjoy that's the natural way of and, sure. you know want to enjoy but sure. that giving letting that go is can be considered painful but instead uh, see the liberative uh, more higher level of p uh, happiness that we get from exchanging that into letting go, I mean, uh, just uh, reminding ourselves, this is to keep the life going for uh, exactly. practicing liberation. That's a higher happiness. That's but the higher. moment that we try to switch it, it might be painful. That's how I understood. Then me, me, definitely, definitely. But I also think me, when you come to do it, and if you're quite convinced about what you're doing, that is, let us say, the path and Nibbana, we, our minds have to, at one point, start earning, let us say, spiritual pleasure from letting go. Isn't it? The more that we let go, right, of course, initially it might be painful, but this happens, it becomes painful when you're, of course, you're quite attached to something or you really want to eat something, right? May you really want to eat something. For me, may, I think may, when I was trying to be vegetarian at home, you know, may, there's meat every single day. So it was, <laughs> and when you're trying to be vegetarian, and back in the day, I thought you have to be vegetarian to be a Buddhist. So, you know, not eating meat whilst there's all of these meats, and then me just eating the vegetables and whatnot, you know, it was quite painful as well. However, however, the more that I did it, the more that I, then I didn't want to stop it. Right. Then you don't want to like these vegetarians who say, okay, I've been a vegetarian for 20 years, 30 years. Right. Now they will not even think about because why they want to keep that uh, streak going. They will not even think about it. And they also don't have any need as well. Maybe. Right. Not everyone, but maybe. Right. Initially, yes. But as the Mahasunnita Sutra suggests, when you're not attached to it, you know, tibbatekai na tattekai. Right? If, if it's there, good. If it's not there, that's all right too. That sense of why? Because you're not 
viewing this in the same manner as before. So I think doing this organically is the best way forward. I think the first way that we can start this is just by sitting to meditate, right? Just by sitting to meditate. And then, um, and then slowly as we, you know, experience meditative bliss, we will be drawn to it, right? Then we will value meditative bliss, then stuffing our faces with calories, for pleasure, hmm? for example, emotional eating. Emotional eating will reduce drastically, right? We have even 30 odd years of studies for this. It says that when you meditate, emotional eating definitely reduces, right? People lose weight, people uh, may become less obese, right? Why? Because the mind realizes that that is a temporary pleasure. And the mind connects to a deeper, more profound pleasure, which is that spiritual pleasure. So we will leave it there for now, everyone. And I will see you tomorrow for the Thursday Sutra class. Uh, sorry, Abhidhamma class. So take care, everyone. And Okumla to Teruan Sarnai. Teruan Sarnai. Teruan Sarnai. Teruan Sarnai. Teruan Sarnai.